Hello, my name is Stephen Chan. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine and the Director of the Center for Pulmonary Vascular Biology and Medicine at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Today, I'm excited to be discussing our laboratory's recent findings connecting vascular stiffness with glutamine metabolism in the pathogenesis of pulmonary hypertension. As many of you know, pulmonary hypertension, or PH, refers to a group of pulmonary vascular diseases that cause increased pulmonary arterial pressure, right heart failure, and often death. But the molecular origins of this disease remain undefined. Recently, our group and others have found that increased pulmonary vascular stiffness occurs early in pH, but its causative relation to disease progression has not been fully defined. Now separately, aerobic glycolysis, which is a chronic shift in energy production from mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis, has been described as a pathogenic driver of pH. And while it is known that increased glycolysis is insufficient to meet the total metabolic demands of proliferating cells, insights regarding additional metabolic reprogramming in pH have been sparse. So in this project, we hypothesized that pulmonary vascular stiffness may act as a separate mechanical stimulus to control metabolic reprogramming and drive cellular proliferation in pH. We began by examining cultured pulmonary vascular cells and various types of pulmonary hypertensive lung tissue. We found that extracellular matrix stiffening resulted in mechanoactivation of two co-transcription factors, YAP and TAS. These factors are inherent to the HIPPO signaling pathway and are known to function as central regulators of cellular proliferation and survival across multiple organs, thus modulating tissue growth and development. In this case, YAP and TAS mechanoactivation modulated a number of key metabolic enzymes, including glutaminase, or GLS-1, in order to coordinate a process called glutaminolysis. Glutaminolysis is the conversion of the amino acid glutamine to glutamate, which is a key step in anaplerosis, or the replenishing of intermediates of the tricarboxylic acid cycle to maintain rapid energy production. In correlation, in cultured pulmonary vascular cells, we found that GLS-1 was critical for anaplerosis and replenished another amino acid, aspartate, which was crucial for sustaining proliferation in stiff matrix. In turn, we found evidence of the activation of YAP, TAS, and GLS-1 in many forms of pH in humans and animals. Notably, these findings were relevant to a particularly enigmatic form of this disease, which is pH caused by human immunodeficiency virus infection, or HIV. For decades, we have known that there is an increased prevalence of pH in HIV-infected individuals, but exceedingly little is known about the molecular processes underlying this condition. Here we found a very striking correlation between YAP, TAS, and GLS-1 activation and pH, both in a non-human primate model of this disease, driven by infection by the simian immunodeficiency virus, or SIV, as well as in HIV, human-infected patients. Finally, to illustrate the causative nature of these molecular events, we studied the monocrotaline rat model of pH. Strikingly, pharmacologic modulation of pulmonary vascular stiffness, YAP activity, or GLS-1 altered glutaminolysis, pulmonary vascular proliferation, and overt manifestations of pH. Ultimately, we are excited about our findings in that they offer multiple new insights in metabolism, matrix biology, and pulmonary vascular disease. First, our results demonstrate direct molecular links between matrix stiffness and downstream cellular metabolism in the diseased pulmonary vessel. These results have critical importance in the understanding of the pathobiology of pH and position both stiffness and metabolism at the early origins of this disease. Given the widespread conditions in both health and disease where such mechanical cues of stiffness are prevalent, including cancer progression, these results likely carry critical importance beyond pH as well. Second, our study provides long-awaited insight into the mechanisms of HIV-induced pH and allow hope that we can offer effective, targeted therapy for this subtype of pH in the near future. Finally, our results offer direct guidance for developing more effective therapeutics for this disease. Specifically, we studied the YAP inhibitor vertiporphyrin, 
which is an already FDA-approved medication in macular degeneration. We also studied a GLS-1 inhibitor called CB839, which is already in clinical trials for cancer. Both of these compounds displayed robust effects in improving pH, at least in our rodent model of disease. Therefore, we are working on repurposing these drugs for treatment of human pH, either separately or together. And we hope that we can do so without the delay of decades to develop new small molecule inhibitors de novo. So in summary, our findings define the activation of glutaminolysis and anaplerosis as a central pathogenic mechanism by which vessel stiffness can stimulate cellular proliferation and pH. These results inform our understanding of how cells balance their energetic demands with extracellular mechanical cues. Our findings also endorse the rapid application of novel pharmacologic inhibitors of these pathways to prevent or reverse human pH. Finally, we believe that this work may have broad application to other human metabolic conditions where mechanosensitive interactions may serve as crucial origins of disease. Thank you very much for your interest in our work, and on behalf of all of our authors, I hope you enjoy reading our study.